guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are headed to Uji, a small city just south of Kyoto known for their tea. Our first stop was probably one of the most famous here, Nakamura Tokichi. We were lucky enough to be the first batch seated and was immediately served some of their famous green tea. They do have two locations here in Uji, the main store and the one by the Uji River, but we stopped by the main store because you can only get this store limited matcha parfait here. And because we came here during the springtime, we were also able to try this beautiful shawari matcha parfait. Since it was our first meal of the day, we did order their green tea soba, which was surprisingly refreshing, especially when paired with this usucha oil. I really regret not getting some of this as a souvenir. Okay, back to the parfaits. The shawari matcha parfait is pretty similar to the traditional one that's served year-round. The main difference here is the use of fresh strawberries and a sakura paste to tie everything together. This was easily one of the best parfaits I've had. We did also order a hojicha tea jelly to try because as much as I loved matcha, hojicha is immaculate when prepared correctly. Unfortunately, this hojicha tea jelly wasn't anything too special, so I recommend definitely sticking to the matcha menu items when visiting. If you do plan on visiting, make sure to pay a visit to their shop, which is adjacent to the cafe. They have matcha flavored sweets you can purchase as souvenir, and most importantly, a wide variety of tea and matcha for purchase. There's even a tea tasting station for you to sample the different types of tea. I ended up leaving with two different types of matcha and several teas, which I'm so excited about. Leave a comment below if you're interested in seeing a full haul of everything I got. Our next stop was just a few steps over at Ito Kyuemon, which was established in 1832 and is definitely another strong contender for matcha and tea. They have a huge variety of tea and tea related souvenirs. If you couldn't find anything in any of the other tea shops, you'll definitely find something here. They do have a cafe in the back of their store, but since we just ate, we ended up just getting their famous matcha ice pops. It's decorated so beautifully with several flavors to choose from, but I of course was drawn to the sakura one. As pretty as it was, taste-wise, it wasn't anything too special since it was just an ice pop, but it's definitely a great midday pick-me-up. Speaking of pick-me-ups, a matcha latte is my go-to, so we had to stop by the super aesthetic Matcha Republic. The cafe itself is super modern and they're known for their cute bottle drinks that you can purchase to go. Their panna cotta matcha lattes are usually their most popular, but we opted to try the sakura salted cream matcha latte instead, which was the perfect balance between savory and sweet. After popping around, we made it to our fourth stop of the day, the small but mighty Tsujiri. To be honest, we were just going to stop by to see what they have, but we ended up getting drawn to their cafe menu because they had some more traditional Japanese sweets that the others don't, like a matcha zenzai which is fresh matcha with mochi. Just look how soft this mochi was. And the yasuhashi which is a mochi stuffed with red bean with some cinnamon. This also came with some hojicha which was amazing. We ended up getting some afterwards and has become a staple in our house. There are a lot of different restaurants and shops that lines the street of this little town, especially when approaching the Uji River. There's also a lot of different cafes, which is where the second Nakamura Tokichi location is. This is actually where we cut through to the riverbank and snap some photos of the Uji Bridge. By the time we headed back out to the main street, which is also where Byuro Inn is, we stumbled upon Masuda Chaho, who were selling these massive matcha dangos. As a dango lover, I could not pass this up, so you best believe I got one, and this was just as good as it looks. They also had a little cafe right next door where we took a quick break with the perfect cup of matcha frappuccino. They even had a world map for visitors to mark where they're from, which was such a cute touch. Eventually, we ended up walking back and across the Asagiri Bridge because right next to the Uji Shrine is a free tea factory museum called Bukuen. They have a restaurant and workshops that you can attend along with a huge gift shop with Uji exclusive souvenirs and teaware. There's also a free exhibit showing the history of Uji, tea harvesting and processing. day trip we decided to change things up and stopped by Hoho Hojicha which specialized in all things Hojicha. This was actually a pretty nice break since we were already getting so much matcha. We ordered their Hojicha flight so that we can sample the different types of Hojicha available. I honestly didn't know there were so many different variations and tasting notes to Hojichas until I tried this so highly recommend getting this if you're a Hojicha fan. 
We also got their Sakura Hojija cake, which I honestly recommend skipping. It wasn't that great, but definitely try some of their other desserts if you stop by. And finally, before heading back to Kyoto, we made sure to pay a quick visit to the Keha Uji Station because I had to see this futuristic Gundam-like architecture for myself. It was designed by Hiroki Wakabayashi in 1995 and it's actually so surreal how much detail was put into this. Definitely make time to come see this for yourself if you can. And that marks the end of our little day trip here in Uji and it was a pretty much a full day if I say so myself. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if you end up visiting any of these places. Thank you so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe for more. I want this one. This one's cute too. Should I get? No, I got Hello Kitty. I got the one I want. I got this one.